Today we come to the last weekend of ordinary time, as next week we begin the great and holy season of Advent. But when times and seasons come to an end, when semesters have started back when it was nice and hot are now beginning to end with the November chill, when we noticed in this upcoming week, this, this Thursday, the children or the cousins getting big when you see them at Thanksgiving, we could quickly come to realize life is always changing. Time passes, sometimes like a river, sometimes like a freight train. Thoughts and emotions, the ones dominated our waking hours back in the spring, have been replaced by other thoughts and emotions. Throughout this past year, tragedy struck, then grace came, and then joy was restored. But even though our Lord Jesus does indeed want all of us to keep our joy, to stay in his peace, there's one irrefutable fact that we cannot escape from. Life is hard. The author, Wallace Stegner, he once wrote, we were going to leave our mark on life, but instead, life left marks on us. And though some of us have been blessed with years, if not decades, that have been pretty enjoyable, in every stage of our lives, life is as difficult as it sometimes is easy. Everyone you know, everyone you see seated here at this Mass, has a more complicated and harder life than you realize. Childhood, oh yeah, childhood, that beautiful, blessed, carefree, untroubled time, it's only that way when we look back at it. Childhood is only that way in retrospect. Children have lives that are just as complex and frustrating as adults. Just when a, a child thinks that everything is popsicles and ice cream, some other kid scratches your face at daycare. What am I even doing at daycare? And why are people laughing at me when I'm trying to talk? In adolescence, whew, what a torturous time that is. A time filled with worry and dread half the time and anxiety and uncertainty the other half. And once you make it to adulthood, all sorts of hopes and dreams come down in the end to very black and white realities. People get married, or they don't. Their children grow up, or they don't. Old age, if we make it that far, requires the patience and often the suffering of Job. To survive, we must learn to live in a world of broken hearts. But here's what we have to know. Though we do indeed have to live in a world of broken hearts, we cannot be one of those broken hearts. Our Lord Jesus, he's not just the king of the universe. He's the king of broken hearts because he's the great mender of broken hearts. Our Lord Jesus Christ, he's not like any other king who's ever lived. He's a true king because he does exactly what we hope a king would do he does not put us under his feet to dominate, to crush, to take advantage of. Rather, he puts our enemies under his feet. What are our enemies? Sin, death, pain, hurt, unforgiveness. He does all that in order to set us free. And what is so very vital for us to remember is that our Lord Jesus, our King, he works from the inside out, always. He wants to be king of our hearts first before we're able to be his servants out in the world. Broken people cannot heal other broken people. Will you please get that one down? Please take that one with you. Broken people can't heal broken people. You just have kids and the cycle continues, more broken people. Only our Lord, who was broken for us upon the cross, can bring our true selves up and out of our brokenness. And we see a very moving and powerful example of this in our Gospels today. This is a Gospel, as many of you know, that we do read quite often on Good Friday, 
where we're there with our Lord Jesus at Calvary, watching our Lord and our King die for us on that sad, dreary hill flanked by the two criminals. Now, one criminal is in a rage, and so many people of today are so overwhelmed with anger and resentment. He's completely and totally powerless, dying upon his own cross. And all he could do, or at least all he thought he could do, was to spew forth anger, especially at our Lord Jesus. Are you not the Christ? Then save yourself and us. But you see, he didn't care if Jesus was really the Christ or not. He was only caring about himself. But the other criminal, the one we call through history, the good thief, he rebukes the other and tells them that they're going to die because they deserve to die. But this Jesus, this King of the Jews, who is nailed to beams of wood with streams of redeeming blood flowing from his kingly crown of thorns, he was the innocent one, the only innocent one. He did not deserve to die. And then this good thief says some of the most heartfelt words you will ever read in the Bible. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. There on that hill, hanging from a cross, his heart broken from the horrible mistakes he committed in his life, the good thief recognizes Jesus as king and asks something that we need to ask to now notice exactly what he says. He did not say, Lord, take me with you. Rather, he simply says, remember me. It's one of the greatest prayers any one of us could ever say. Those two words bring him two powerful means by which we can, we can overcome a broken heart and actually live and not just survive in a hard world. First, if you know that someone, anyone, will remember you, well, then your life was worth it. It was worth living for. That that someone who remembers you is also your Lord, your King, your God, well, then your heart can be full, despite whatever life might have thrown up against you. You will not be forgotten by the one from whom you came. You see, if God remembers you, but nobody else does, you're still remembered. And your heart can beat with hope and love for you are not and never will be abandoned. But secondly, those two words, remember me, help us to live our lives as we should. For what are we saying to Jesus with those words? What was the good thief saying to him? Remember me, not as you see, as I will be, not as I am. So just picture yourself as that thief hanging there right next to our Lord Jesus. Lord, remember me, but, but not as you see. A bruised, dirty, guilty criminal who's dying on this cross, but as I could be in you not as I am. And our Lord Jesus promises this man for whom he himself is dying for, I will not simply remember you. Oh no, there's so much more. For amen, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Isn't that exactly what our hearts want to hear? As Catholics, we have the great ability through the Holy Spirit from the love of God the Father even for a moment, even for a taste, to be with our Lord in paradise every time we come to Mass. But once God fills and repairs your heart, confident you will never be forgotten, we need to go out and help others to receive the exact same blessing. You know, there's this priest by the name of Father Vincent Nagel. He tells the story of a mother that he knew whose daughter had lost her Catholic faith while in college. She dropped out of her college courses and moved to another city with some rather worldly and godless friends. With no real means to support herself, the young woman was completely out of contact with her mother 
her parish back home, her former friends, and even for a while with God. The mother, of course, suffered, but she kept on praying. The one day, Father Vincent, after Mass, was with his mother and some others, and they were talking about their children. One woman was talking about her daughter, who was the same age as a girl who had dropped out of college. That this mother was praising her daughter because of all the right choices that she had made and how well her life was turning out. But the face of the mother of the missing girl was just filled with pain. But Father Vincent took her aside and told her, we speak well of what we see in the other girl, but no one knows what is going on inside the mind and heart of your daughter. No one knows what prayers she may be making to God. No one knows what mighty, even heroic struggle she may be waging for her soul, or her yearning for virtue, her begging for redemption. But God sees he may well be looking at her as a hero of faith. So let us be with her in the struggle through our prayers. The young girl did finally come to trust God once again, and through the influence of some very good, faithful friends, she came back to the faith and back to her mother. But in that wonderful piece of advice that Father Vincent gave to that grieving mother, what exactly was he pointing to? What was the bottom line of his advice? Because we ask for, and God tells us, that he will remember us, we are then to remember others, not as we last saw them, but as they could be, not as they are. We are to remember others with hope, not with despair, despite anything they might have done to you or to themselves. So here are some questions for you. And once you get these down, you need to go out and teach the rest of the world. Since the beginning of our lives, or at least ever since we could reason for ourselves, we have asked, am I safe? Am I important? Am I forgiven? Am I loved? Look at the crucifix. I mean, go ahead, look at the crucifix. One there is one here, look at it. The great king hanging from there is going to give you the answer to those questions. And Jesus says to you, because I died for you, not even death can harm you. You are safe with me. Because I took the nails for you, bled for you, died for you. You are very, very important to me. Look at me looking at you from the cross. You are forgiven. And no greater act of love is there than this, to lay down my life out of love for you. You are loved. Yes, time passes. Yes, life is hard, but the love of our Lord Jesus is eternal. Give him your broken heart. And let the king of the universe reign in you as he heals you. And know you no longer have anything to fear or to worry about. He will remember you.